Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell Illustrated by E.B. Lewis Question of the Week How do people survive in the wilderness? Genre A novel is an extended work of fiction that contains story elements such as setting, plot, and theme. As you read this novel excerpt, keep asking yourself how each incident gives rise to future events. From 1835 to 1853, a young Native American girl named Karana lived alone on a rugged island 75 miles off the coast of California. The author has fashioned this story out of the few facts known about her. Karana and her people lived on the island until Aleut hunters killed some of the men. A friendly ship later took her people off the island, but she stayed there to be with her brother who was left behind by the ship's crew. After her brother was killed by wild dogs, Karana faced the challenge of living alone on the island. The island of the blue dolphins was my home. I had no other. It would be my home until the white men returned in their ship. But even if they came soon, before next summer, I could not live without a roof or a place to store my food. I would have to build a house. But where? That night I slept on the rock, and the next day I began the search. The morning was clear, but to the north, Banks of clouds hung low. Before long they would move in across the island, and behind them many other storms were waiting. I had no time to waste. I needed a place that was sheltered from the wind, not too far from Coral Cove, and close to a good spring. There were two such places on the island, one on the headland and the other less than a league to the west. The headland seemed to be the more favorable of the two, but since I had not been to the other for a long time, I decided to go there and make certain. The first thing I found which I had forgotten was that this place was near the wild dog's lair. As soon as I drew near to it, the leader came to the opening of the cave and watched me with his yellow eyes. If I built a hut here, I would have to kill him and his pack. I planned to do this anyway, but it would take much time. The spring was better than the one near the headland, being less brackish and having a steadier flow of water. Besides, it was much easier to reach, since it came from the side of a hill and not from a ravine as the other one did. It was also close to the cliff and a ridge of rocks, which would shelter my house. The rocks were not so high as those on the headland, and therefore would give me less protection from the wind. Yet they were high enough, and from them I could see the north coast and Coral Cove. The thing that made me decide on the place to build my house was the sea elephants. The cliffs here fell away easily to a wide shelf that was partly covered when the tide came in. It was a good place for sea elephants because they could crawl halfway up the cliff if the day were stormy. On fair days they could fish among the pools or lie on the rocks. The bull is very large and often weighs as much as thirty men. The cows are much smaller but they make more noise than the bulls, screaming and barking through the whole day and sometimes at night. The babies are noisy, too. On this morning the tide was low and most of the animals were far out, just hundreds of specks against the waves, yet the noise they made was deafening. I stayed there the rest of the day, looking around, and that night, at dawn, when the clamor started again, I left and went back to the headland. There was another place to the south where I could have built my house, near the destroyed village of Galasset, but I did not want to go there because it would remind me of the people who were gone, 
Also the wind blew strong in this place, blowing against the dunes which covered the middle part of the island, so that most of the time sand is moving everywhere. Rain fell that night and lasted for two days. I made a shelter of brush at the foot of the rock which kept off some of the water and ate the food I had stored in the basket. I could not build a fire because of the rain and I was very cold. On the third day the rain ceased and I went out to look for things which I would need in building the house. I likewise needed poles for a fence. I would soon kill the wild dogs, but there were many small red foxes on the island. They were so numerous that I could never hope to get rid of them either by traps or with arrows. They were clever thieves, and nothing I stored would be safe until I had built a fence. The morning was fresh from the rain. The smell of the tide pools was strong. Sweet odors came from the wild grasses in the ravines and from the sand plants on the dunes. I sang as I went down the trail to the beach and along the beach to the sand spit. I felt that the day was an omen of good fortune. It was a good day to begin my new home. Many years before, two whales had washed up on the sand spit. Most of the bones had been taken away to make ornaments, but the ribs were still there, half buried in the sand. These I used in making the fence. One by one I dug them up and carried them to the headland. They were long and curved, and when I had scooped out holes and set them in the earth, they stood taller than I did. I put the ribs together with their edges almost touching and standing so that they curved outward, which made them impossible to climb. Between them I wove many strands of bull kelp, which shrinks as it dries and pulls very tight. I would have used seal sinew to bind the ribs together, for this is stronger than kelp, but wild animals like it and soon would have gnawed the fence down. Much time went into its building. It would have taken me longer except that the rock made one end of the fence and part of a side. For a place to go in and out, I dug a hole under the fence just wide and deep enough to crawl through. The bottom and sides I lined with stones. On the outside I covered the hole with a mat woven of brush to shed the rain and on the inside with a flat rock which I was strong enough to move. I was able to take eight steps between the sides of the fence, which gave me all the room I would need to store the things I gathered and wished to protect. I built the fence first because it was too cold to sleep on the rock, and I did not like to sleep in the shelter I had made until I was safe from the wild dogs. The house took longer to build than the fence because it rained many days, and because the wood I needed was scarce. There was a legend among our people that the island had once been covered with tall trees. This was a long time ago, at the beginning of the world, when Tumayawit and Mukut ruled. The two gods quarreled about many things. Tumayawit wished people to die. Mukut did not. Tumayawit angrily went down, down to another world under this world, taking his belongings with him, so people die because he did. In that time there were tall trees, but now there were only a few in the ravines, and these were small and crooked. It was very hard to find one that would make a good pole. I searched many days, going out early in the morning and coming back at night, before I found enough for a house. I used the rock for the back of the house and the front I left open, since the wind did not blow from this direction. The poles I made of equal length, using fire to cut them as well as a stone knife, which caused me much difficulty because I had never made such a tool before. There were four poles on each side, set in the earth, 
and twice that many for the roof. These I bound together with sinew, and covered with female kelp, which has broad leaves. The winter was half over before I finished the house, but I slept there every night and felt secure because of the strong fence. The foxes came when I was cooking my food and stood outside gazing through the cracks. And the wild dogs also came, gnawing at the whale ribs, growling because they could not get in. I shot two of them, but not the leader. While I was building the fence and the house, I ate shellfish and perch, which I cooked on a flat rock. Afterwards, I made two utensils. Along the shore there were stones that the sea had worn smooth. Most of them were round, but I found two with hollow places in the center, which I deepened and broadened by rubbing them with sand. Using these to cook in, I saved the juices of the fish, which are good and were wasted before. For cooking seeds and roots, I wove a tight basket of fine reeds which was easy because I had learned how to do it from my sister, Yulape. After the basket had dried in the sun, I gathered lumps of pitch on the shore, softened them over the fire, and rubbed them on the inside of the basket so that it would hold water. By heating small stones and dropping them into a mixture of water and seeds in the basket, I could make gruel. I made a place for fire in the floor of my house, hollowing it out and lining it with rocks. In the village of Galasset, we made new fires every night, but now I made one fire, which I covered with ashes when I went to bed. The next night I would remove the ashes and blow on the embers. In this way, I saved myself much work. There were many gray mice on the island, and now that I had food to keep from one meal to other, I needed a safe place to put it. On the face of the rock, which was the back wall of my house, were several cracks as high as my shoulder. These I cut out and smoothed to make shelves where I could store my food and the mice could not reach it. By the time winter was over and grass began to show green on the hills, my house was comfortable. I was sheltered from the wind and rain and prowling animals. I could cook anything I wished to eat. Everything I wanted was there at hand.